On behalf of the, I, I just about blew myself out of here. I don't know how the sound <laughs> is for you, but on behalf of the visiting lecturer committee, I want to welcome you to this September installment of our monthly programs. We're in for a real treat tonight. Tonight was the first time I met Cameron Morgan in person. And yet I, I, I met him, so to speak, in virtual reality when <laughs> under restrictions of the pandemic, he played in our church. Cameron is a native of Charlotte, but he came to Durham to participate in the outstanding jazz program at North Carolina Central University. He is a virtuoso, both on saxophone and on the piano. He has uh, opened for uh, other performers such as Patti LaBelle, The Whisperers, and, uh, uh, and Marsalis. Brent <laughs> Brandon Marsalis. Uh, so, uh, as I say, we're in for a real treat. He is also the music director for No Greater Love Christian Church here in Durham. Welcome, Cameron Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. I appreciate you all coming here. Uh, thank you, Mr. Robert. Give him a hand. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. I appreciate it. So my name, as he said, is my name is Cameron Morgan. Um, as, as he alluded to before, um, I'm a musician, and I'm just grateful to play. I, I, don't, I don't take it for granted that I'm even able to play at these, the, the, you know, considering the conditions we're in right now. But I'm, I'm grateful to play. Um, one of the things I think is music. One of the things I like to define music as the organization of sound. And because um, a lot of times we have a lot of noises <laughs> that go on, but if you can find a way to link that up, to, 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 to get it on rhythm, to get it, to get it together, that's the beautiful thing about it. And that's what I think I like about music is that it joins us all together. I call it, it's the universal language. I might not speak another language. You might not speak my language. I might not speak your language. But when we play music, it all brings it together. Um, and one of my favorite uh, ways to express my music is through, through gospel. So what I'll do is actually start with one of my favorite um, gospel hymns to play, which is, you'll find out what that is. <laughs> See if you know this.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, that's a rendition of Hope You Figured It Out by now. What's the, what was the name of that song? <laughs> and if you notice, what I tried to do is uh, I played the melody. I don't, I don't sing. I, I say what I like to say is I make a joyful noise. <laughs> but I believe the word tells us that everything that has breath should praise the Lord. So try, we, we try to use the, however we know how to, however we can do that. Um, one of the things I like to do is play the melody, but then I try to, you see how I kind of varied it? Uh, instead of just playing the... I try to put a little... So you're always trying to take it from something that you know and then take it to, to where you don't know. So what I mean by that is you're taking a start from something. I know the melody, but now I want to try to make it my own. And whenever you're singing or anything we're doing, somebody can show you how to do it, but then you still have to make it your own. And everybody, God gave everybody a different, you know, a different, even different fingerprint. So everybody's going to express it a different way. But that's the thing I love about music. Um, and especially with the, within gospel and the jazz language, you allow for that free expression, you know, so that it comes from the heart. Because that's, that's what you really, really want your music to do or anything we do. We want it to come from the heart. You know, people can see the, the truth and, and, the, and where it comes from. Um, another one of the reasons I like um, the song Amazing Grace is also because when you think about the lyric, lyrical, lyrical content um, of anything we play in, and when you have the lyrics that are, to me, the most important thing is, is, is the Word of God. So you, gotta, you have an eternal message <laughs> from an eternal God. So you got Amazing Grace, a concept like grace. Him, God giving you something that you didn't work for, something that you didn't deserve. But he bestowed it upon us free, as a free gift. And so when you, when you can express that musically, that's yet another honor. God also gave us the ability to, to enjoy beauty, you know, to, to, to hear sounds. And we don't, take, we don't take these things for granted, just being able to hear, you know, to walk, to talk. Um, and these are all blessings from God, and I love to express them um, through music. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons I like Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And they, and they also use a lot of the metaphors, and they, they use a lot, of, a lot of language to help express, because it's hard to express emotions a lot of times, even just through words a lot of times. So a lot of times music can do that. For example, like I um, asked y'all, so if I, play, if I play this right here. I'm just making up something. When I played that, most of the time you have, you have a picture in your head what it either takes you somewhere or, or especially if you play a song that you've remembered um, or haven't heard in years, what does it normally do? It transplants you back to where you came from or where you had that memory. And that's one of the beautiful things about music. It, 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 it takes you back to where you were um, or it takes you somewhere you've never been. If I played something like this, um, and also that it carries emotion. So and in, without even telling anyone, if I play something like Express that as a happy emotion, a sad emotion. What, what would be some of the ideas you all would have? What would you, what, would you, what emotion would you say that encapsulates? Melancholy. Melancholy. What else? Someone else. Is, is it happy? Contemplative. Contemplative. That's, that's a great one. That's a great one. What somebody else? Anyone else? And it's okay. Let me play another one. So if I play something. What kind of emotion did that express to you? Joy. joy. What somebody else? Happy so joy. Children Happy children playing. And I, and I know a lot of times that's, that's funny because that's normally expressed when we're trying to indicate children. A lot of times, if you notice in, in music or in film, you have the, the music a little higher in the register. So when I'm playing on the piano, if you see towards my right, the notes get higher. <laughs> to my left, the notes are lower. 
So a lot of times when you're trying to show children, you'll hear. You can make it like maybe a music box or something, if you remember uh, with the little, um, the little ballerina spinning around. Uh, let me play another one. Um, a lot of times this is used. Let me see what, what you think this makes you feel. What, is, what does that make you feel? Sitting by the ocean. Sitting by the ocean? Okay. <laughs> what else? What else? <laughs> Under the surface. Celestial. What else? Dream, dreaming, exactly. exactly. So a lot of times in film, you'll hear a lot of times if someone is trying to think back, say, I had a dream one day, you'll hear music like, I was having a dream one day, and I noticed, you know, <laughs> various things. But again, all these things, without me telling you, each one of you had a, your own experience with it. A lot of them are similar, you know, joy. I think someone said children when I was playing another example. Um, but that's one of the beautiful things about music is that it, it kind of bypasses the intellect and goes right to the soul. And, that's, and, and, and you already have an emotional reaction to it just, just innately. I believe that's because the way we were designed, the we, way we were created. But we were able to express these things. So that's one of the beautiful things, I think. That, and it all joins us all together because there's not any kind of, 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 of any kind of separation between that because we all are given emotions. We're all are given conscience. We're all are given feelings. And it's a beautiful thing to do to express them through music, whether you're playing it, I love to play it, or you're just listening to it. Um, but we see music is around us always. I mean, it's, a, it's very few times you ever see anything that doesn't, it's not accompanied by music, um, in terms of at least, at least film or um, any, kind of, any kind of media. Good, good luck trying to find music, and not, not any music in any kind of thing you watch on television or something. Every, every commercial or anything is going to have music accompanied. Um, any good story that's, that's on, the, on the big, big screen or something, it'll, it'll definitely be expressed in musical terms as well. And that's why I say for me, um, as a musician as well, and playing in church, for me, the greatest expression is, is putting to words my beliefs, putting to words the gospel, putting to words, as I alluded to before, with, with amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. So you can combine all those elements, and I feel like that's when you have the greatest music to you, is when you can combine all those elements, what you believe, your, your, your feelings, your emotions, and then figure out a way musically to make that happen. Um, there's many other examples I could play, but, but I, I think... That'll, that'll, that'll suffice <laughs> in that. Um, just a little about, about me. Um, I, grew up in, I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina, as he, as he mentioned. Um, and I, I really think that got me interested in music. I mean, I, my, my father played the saxophone. He didn't play professionally, but he, he played and kept his old saxophone under the bed. And I found it one day. He pulled it out and said, let me, let me, let me, let me play on this. And they, they, they dealt with me a, a bunch of years just blowing all kind of crazy sounds out of it, trying to, <laughs> trying to make something happen with it. But they um, allowed me to do that for a few years. Um, and I went to school, and um, I joined as many bands as I could get into. I was in the um, pet band, the marching band, the symphonic band. Then I, <laughs> every band I could get into. And then, um, then when I was at church, um, there, was, there was a piano at the church. So I said, let me give this a try as well. So then I was interested in the piano as well um, as, as the saxophones, which I'll play in a second. Um, and so, so after, after a while of just playing those, mainly in church, um, um, just trying to just take a love, no, no training in, initially, um, just, just trying to express, again, emotions um, through the instrument. I've always, I've always had that um, desire to, to express what you're feeling through the instrument, because sometimes that's the best way to do it. Um, one of the things also that I did, um, I started to take piano lessons. I just took piano lessons for about five years, um, and, and then, I, then after that, I just continued to play in church. And then um, when I was in high school, I got into a, a jazz band. That's when I really start hearing about jazz and, and a lot of the um, great saxophones, like one of my favorite, Charlie Parker, and I know some of those, um, Charlie Parker and Sonny Stitt and Sonny Rollins and um, John Coltrane, and, and so a lot of those were a major influence upon me, uh, and I think um, even as a, as a young child, that's, that's kind of, that was, that, was, that was just very interesting, how they could just sit there and, and play those instruments, like, that's, I was like, wow, <laughs> that's why I think it's good to you know, expose your children today, because you never know, you know what, they'll, what they'll do with that or how that will inspire them. Um, and that's one of the things I did for the piano as well as saxophone. Um, got a lot of inspiration uh, from seeing a lot of people play and, and just listening to a lot of the records. Back then it was on tapes for me, um, uh, cassette tapes, um, and, and really trying to emulate what I heard. 
Um, and as I, as I said before, I know music is a language, so the way I play is different than some, the way someone else plays, um, but it's because of what I heard growing up, the sounds that I heard, so I have a certain way. Someone else might play. I'm sure some of you might play. You might play differently, and you have a, but it's all beautiful because it's like, it's just, that's how God made us. God made us all in, um, differently, but we're able still to all express something emotionally. We're always to, ex- to express something spiritually as well. Um, and that's, that's one of the beautiful things I love about music, what the music allows us to do. Um, I w- what I want to do now is I want to play a few more um, selections on my, on my saxophone. Um, right here I have a... I have, an, um, cut this off. I have an alto saxophone here. And uh, when, I, when I attended North Carolina Central University, um, when I was studying jazz, I was learning more about, you know, some of my favorite artists that I was listening to growing up, like I said, Charlie Parker and um, Sonny Stitt, especially Cannonball Adderley. I don't know if you all are familiar with any of those, but those are some of my favorites. Um, I also, also, before I even was studying a lot of the, the jazz greats, I was listening to people like Grover Washington. Anybody, anybody Grover Washington? Um, Junior? Um, saxophone, yeah. Another, another great um, um, saxophone that really, really inspired me. Um, and one of the first songs that I that I learned from him was called Mr. Magic. I don't know if you all are familiar with that song, but I like to just play just a little bit of that. Uh, Mr. Magic is by, um, let me cut this mic off real quick. Mr. Magic is by Grover Washington. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was, um, that's, one of, that's one of the songs that I learned. Um, again, that was Mr. Magic by Grover Washington. Uh, I learned that back in the, I think it was back in the 90s uh, uh, when I was growing up. Um, but again, that's another thing. What, what kind of emotions did you, did you feel when I was playing those things? Okay. Happy, happiness. Happy. What, what about somebody else? What, or what kind of colors or pictures did you have in your mind when I was playing? Did you, did you, did you think? Where did your mind go? Where did you, you think? I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, she said there was. Um, say it again. There was a black a background, and then what else? And you said you was wondering if I was improvising. Yeah. She said there was the background, and then me, and she was trying to decide who, who was doing what. If, if I'm hearing you correctly, yeah, about who was doing what. So, so what I did is, I, if you notice, I had the drum beat going in the background, and then I had, if you heard this kind of electric piano kind of sound, I had that accompany me. I recorded that earlier so that I could play the saxophone out there and, 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 and do it all together. And then I went to the piano and played over top of all that. So what you were hearing was the, the percussion sound, you know, all that sound right there, plus me playing, a, it was an electric piano, I think it was a Rhodes, a Rhodes piano in the background. And then I played the piano, which is the, the acoustic piano over the top of that. So you were hearing correctly, there was, it was a lot going on. <laughs> yes, man. Yes, and then I'll try to mix them together as well. Then the, the, the saxophone and, the, and, and I'll do that a lot of times to kind of bring it all together as well. Uh, anybody have anything else? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Wonderfully expressed. She said it sounded like a conversation that one of them would talk and then one of them would answer. Exactly. Exactly. It was exactly what it was. And that's one of the things I was trying to do because, again, music is a language. And if, you, and if you really think, if I had a group of musicians up here, four or five musicians, the best we could do is if we, if we, if we had a conversation with one another, one plays their part. Like the drummer knows he needs to stay on the beat. If I'm playing on the alto saxophone, which is what I just played, I'm going to play the melody. That was what, da, ba, ba, da, da, da. I'll play the melody. Now, when I sit down on the keyboard, you hear more of the chords. And the chord is just more than one note played at the same time. So this is just a note. This is a chord. Anytime I add... So then that's my lane. And if we put it all together, it's like a conversation. Everyone can't speak at the same time or it'll sound <laughs> like, like, a, like an argument. <laughs> so so that's, what, that's what you look for with, with music a lot of times. If everybody knows their, their lane to stay in, you all contribute um, to the end goal of making, making beautiful music. Um, anybody, any, anything else? All right, cool, cool. So we'll, so we'll move on. So um, also one of the other songs that I, I, I picked up as well um, when, when I was in college, um, when I was in college, I became the music director of a church, which I'm currently still attend. This is um, No Greater Love Christian Church right here in Durham, um, Dr. Arlene Chavis, um, No Greater Love Christian Church. But there was a lot of gospel, um, more, more gospel songs that I was learning as well. Um, and, and one of those I'll play, this is, this is a soprano saxophone, so it has a little bit higher sound than my, my alto saxophone. Um, I haven't played this one as long, but it's yet another, another way to, to express. So this is a soprano saxophone, but there's a couple of other hymns I, I, I've, I've been learning. Um, and sometimes I'll play them on the alto or I'll play them on the piano as well. Um, but I just want to play another, just a little bit of another hymn um, that, I've, that I've learned and, and continue to work on.
Did anybody recognize that one? Great is thy favor. Another, 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 another song. It, it, another song that I, I feel like is a, is powerful because also because of the words. Because um, obviously I wasn't singing with my voice, but I was making melody that way. But I hope you all felt the emotion, felt the felt the truth because it still conveys an emotion. Um, what was some of the feelings you all felt? Did it take you back to where you were? Or what are some of the things you all felt when I was playing that? Yes, ma'am. I, I can. I hope I know the songs, though. <laughs> uh, she, she was asking if I knew how to play um, Go Tell It on the Mountain. I can. I can play it. I've not played that one in a while, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get up here and not do that justice. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She said it, it reminded her of Wednesday night services. And she called that as great as thy faithfulness. Yes, ma'am. Because a lot of times it'll take you. If you heard a song that you've not heard in years, for me, for me, for most people, it'll take you right back. If you heard an old song, it might take whatever you was doing. And so it, it, it encapsulates that moment in time, which is another wonderful, powerful element of, of music. And like I said, for me to express that great is thy faithfulness, how God is faithful, even though we're not faithful. But you put that to music, it just takes it to a whole other level, especially if you're a believer. You, 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 you see the beauty behind that. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. He said, his mercies are new to us every morning. All that I've needed, you've provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Your mercy and love. I mean, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful words. And I notice many other choruses, and I'm still learning a lot of the hymns myself. <laughs> and I notice many other um, stanzas of that as well that can be sung. But again, one of the goals that I have in terms of for me musically is, is, is to make sure that I'm expressing the emotion of, of the piece, and, and especially for gospel, if I know what the lyrics are, are talking about, it helps me to play better. You know, it helps you to feel the music better. It helps if you know what you're talking about, if you've studied the scriptures, and, 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 and as you continue to study and you put that to music, it, to me, that's, that's the biggest blessing right there because you're playing music that's, that has an eternal, that has an eternal worth to it. And for me, that's, that's where I come from with all my music, no matter what style I'm playing. If I'm playing contemporary or playing gospel or whatever, it's still a gift that God has given. And I just want to, you know, express that to the best of my abilities. Um, um, me, at this point, let me, um, let me see. Uh, I want to uh, play one more, one more selection here. And then I think we'll move into uh, questions. Um, um, before I do that... Um, also, too, because uh, since I, I play gospel and also jazz, um, a lot of times when you think about, you know, gospel and jazz, one, one of the things you hear with gospel and jazz is, 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 is there really the connection between the two because it's really like brothers and sisters <laughs> because really, really, if you really think about it and really study it, the really main difference is, is the lyrical content. Um, if I, let me cut this off. If I play, if I play... That could be considered as jazz, or depending on if you if you if you change the words, it could be gospel. Now I can't sing, so I'm not gonna try to sing a song. But <laughs> so if I was to think of if I was to put lyrics to that, I could make that gospel, or I could make that jazz. And a lot of times, um, and that was one of some of the issues a lot of the artists had coming up as well is is the sound felt. Because again, remember, like I said, this music has a certain emotion to it. It made some people think of the nightclub, but other maybe people might have heard a gospel song out of that. But it was the, the emotion that you felt internally that, that made it. But the thing that distinguished it to, for me, in, in, in my, my opinion, is, is the lyrics. Because a lot of times you can't really tell what someone is trying to express um, until they actually tell you. Because you can't as they say you can't judge a book by its cover, or you can't judge the sound by its cover. Like even, in, even, in the, even in the scriptures, I mean, you can't, you can't hear what the psalms sounded like. We can read them, you know, and speculate what they might have sounded like, um, you know, given the instruments that they had at the time, but it's, it's, it's still open to our interpretation. That's one of the beautiful things I love because no matter what your culture is or, or, or where you're from, socioeconomic background, whatever, there's a way that you can interpret it. And one of the, and whatever, what you're, whatever you're trying to feel, especially if you're trying to interpret the scriptures, when you know the scriptures and you're trying to put those to music, you don't have to be a great musician. You can just sing. 
Everybody in here carries an instrument around with you all the time, your voice. And if you can't sing, you can tap your foot <laughs> or you can slap your finger. But you'll be all, and God has given us an ability to all to join in. And, again, that's the, that's the beautiful thing I love about it. Um, or if you're watching someone else play, sometimes you can, in church we have people clap their hands. Come on, y'all, clap your hands with us. <laughs> but that's another way to join in. You see how music just pulls us all in together. That's one of the beautiful things I love about it. And it's, 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 that's another importance of it is because music, you could be having a bad day and you hear that good song. Come on, you go to church and you hear the choir sing and you just, your spirits are uplifted. And, and I don't care where you come from, that's, that's, that's a universal thing. And I think if we have more, spend more time with that <laughs> than other things, we can join together. Um, and and I, I believe music is one of the ways to do that. Um, one, of the, um, one, one more tune. Um, one more tune I'd like to play for you today. Um, it's on my alto saxophone. This, this is a song that also, um, we sing it in my choir at, at No Greater Love Christian Church. This is by a contemporary artist by the name of Ashan Mitchell. Um, it's a song called Nobody Greater. I'll just play a little bit of that um, on, my, on my alto saxophone. And, and, it's, and, it's, and it's Nobody Greater is, is in reference to God. It's saying, I look, I look to the highest mountain, I look to the lowest valley, Still, I couldn't find anybody. There's nobody greater, nobody greater than you. That's pretty much what the song is saying. Um, um, a beautiful, beautiful song, but it has elements of, you hear a lot of kind of jazz kind of sound in it, um, but you have a lot of the contemporary sound with the beat you hear kind of present there. Um, but again, like I say, I like to listen to it, and since I'm not playing words, kind of get the emotion behind it. But again, the, the, the point of the artist is nobody greater, so it's a song of praise to God saying that there's nobody greater than you. And I like to express that through my instrument. I'll just play a little bit of that.
Yes, ma'am. You're obviously a genius. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> My, now, for me, I'm sorry, she was asking, can I um, play my flavor, favorite classical piano? For me, I never got to study classical. I never, I never studied classical. You never. I never studied the classical music before. You never played any classical? No, never. Uh. So, but, but you can probably hear, I have heard a lot of classical, so I have that in my plan. If, I don't know if you kind of can tell. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There's no problem. Yes, ma'am. Oh, he's trying to get it. <laughs> okay. Are we on now? Yes. There we go. I can hear myself. So uh, I want to bring a microphone to you if you have a question. And uh, okay. Uh, be right back. I was blown away by the soprano sax. Why don't we hear that more frequently? Um, the soprano sax is a little, um, a little, she, oh, yeah, I guess you could probably hear it. Um, it's a little harder to play, um, and it's a little hard to, to play in tune a lot of times. So a lot of saxophonists, um, you hear most a lot of times they play the tenor saxophone, which is a little bit larger than my alto that I had. Um, it's a little easier to control and to control the, the, the sound. of It's a little easier to play and to get a good sound out of. Soprano, since it's really high in the register, it can be very, what they call pitchy, or, or the intonation is a little harder to control. Um, also, too, just even just getting your hands on one, a lot of music stores don't even sell them, so a lot of kids a lot of times don't even get exposed to them. <laughs> you know, a lot of times everybody would carry an alto saxophone or a tenor saxophone or a piano, but you don't find those all the times in music stores, so it's a little harder to, to come about as well other than in play. Yes, ma'am. Beautiful sound, though. Yes, ma'am. You had a question. Can you play things uh, like in the, in the style of famous jazz musicians, like, for example, a Thelonious Monk piece? <laughs> I can try. Th Thelonious Monk, yeah, he, um, <laughs> let's see what he did. He did, um, he did, um, One of, the, one of the artists, he's a Thelonious Monk. Now he, I, think he's from, I think he's from North Carolina as well. But if you notice a lot of the dissonant tones that I was playing, so like so, no, she would think are accidental. So you, you do some. So he was known for taking those notes and, and tonalities you think are kind of, to me, they'll sound distressing or, or, or dissonant. And making them beautiful, like this is this is not a mistake. You find those those notes in between there. That's one of the things I love about the way Theolonius Monk plays, and he has a kind of a different style than a lot of the other um, um, jazz artists and jazz pianists that I've listened to. Um, but I, but I love it. It's, it's hard to pro I hope I approximate it <laughs> um, in, somewhere close. But yeah, he's another jazz great that I was influenced by. Yes, sir. Good question. Yes, sir. Do you ever play in any clubs in Durham? I play, um, a lot of the time I played a lot of different restaurants. I'm a member of a number of bands. Um, um, I don't know if you know about, the, it's a new vibe band. I play with a group called Mojazz. Uh, matter of fact, we just played um, at the Lazy Days. Um, we do a lot of outdoor festivals. The Lazy Days Jazz Festival um, is in Cary um, a couple weeks ago. Um, then I was, um, last night I just came back from, it was a, it actually was a, it was a country 
I forget the country artist's name, <laughs> but it was out in Bun, North Carolina. So I, so I do. I, I play different places. I play sometimes. I play at the hotels. Play the hotels in Raleigh. Um, I kind of move around. Play, play wherever the wherever the music is needed. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Do you compose some music? I have. Um, Comp, though composition, I will say at this point, for me, I'm still kind of building my music vocabulary before I actually put out my own, own works, but I have been working on pieces. Actually, with one of the pieces uh, I'm working on right now, I have a group called the Collective Groove Band, and we're actually out working on a, um, a, a single right now. Uh, we were just in the studio a couple, couple of days ago trying to put that in, uh, in my part of the composition. I'm on saxophone and piano on that one. Um, I composed the melody for it. So most of my compositions have, have come by way of... Um, writing for plays. Uh, that's one of the other things I've done um, at North Carolina Central University. I was music director for a lot of the, the theatrical productions from 2005 to 2012. I've also worked with um, various schools. Um, at Hillside High School, I did a lot of productions over there. And within that, a lot of my compositions came for, for scenes. Like, where I, I was, like earlier I was talking about where I was saying certain sounds create certain motions. I've had to write for like we had a play, uh, maybe it was back in 2006, I wrote some music for, called A Touch of Sugar, which was dealing with um, um, diabetes. Um, so the director was asking me to write music for that. And so I was taking those ideas, as I was saying before, trying to find the emotion to fit what the artists were talking about. Also, I'm music director for a touring play called Spare the Rod, Spoil the Child. Um, and there's a lot of scene changes and, and and music that goes up under someone talking. So if someone's having like an argument, you got to have music to express that. Or if someone's sad, like we have a funeral scene, you have to have music to express that. And that's what I kind of pull on. So my, most of my compositions have come up under works, but not at this point. I've not just produced an album by myself for like my own, like I don't know, like a Kenny G or something like that, or whatever artists people like to listen to these days. But it's been more collaborations. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you were playing uh, that uh, hymn, was it? Uh, about the, uh, I, I can't even think of the name of it right now. About uh, what is it? Lardner Morris hymn. Things like what? The song that Lardner Morris writes. Uh, Great is our faithfulness. Is that it? Yeah. I yeah. played Great is the faithfulness. Yes, sir. Okay, now you would play this in jazz style. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Could you sing that? I could not sing it. Sound. No, huh? <laughs> I wish I could sing. I don't sing. I don't sing well. No, sir. <laughs> okay, I remember many years ago hearing a recording of Mahalia Jackson All right. singing "Silent Night." Oh wow! <laughs> and it was beautiful. Oh yeah. But yeah, it was the the uh, the phrases were elongated, like sort of like jazz, but it was not jazz. Yes. I have never heard it since. But I was understanding that back in the early 50s that it was the most popular song in Europe. Oh, wow. Yeah, and anything about Mahalia Jackson. I love Mahalia Jackson. <laughs> she got that, that stirring voice, the wide vibrato. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I'd better check that out. Thank you, sir. You can check that out. May I make a comment? When he was playing Great Is Our Faithfulness, were you saying the words in your head? <laughs> That's, an, that's, that's, that's one of the powers of music right there. And I, when, I, when I was playing Great As Our Faithfulness, I was actually saying, saying the words in my head um, that kind of keep me in my, in my, in where I'm at in the, in the song. And, that's, and it makes you express differently. Um, also, within music, you don't even have to sing the words, but if you know the notes in the scale, a lot of times people will use that. But I think it's always best to still kind of get back to the melody so that you all can join in and sing as well. That's, that's Any more questions? A lot of our sacred music began on the street and in the bars. Yes. I mean, we, we take the secular stuff and baptize it for <laughs> Christian purposes. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about what's involved in that process? I mean, I, I can imagine that in mm -hmm. terms of, of the, the verbal transition, yes. but in terms of the musical transition, can... Can, is there something distinctive about that that, that that might 
be helpful to us to understand? Yeah, well, um, it's, it's many ways. Like I said, the, to me, the, the, the biggest thing is, is, is really the lyrics. I mean, cause, cause, because if you, really listen, if you really listen to the music and understand about how music works, it's, it's really the same. Cause, um, and, and it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of like, I forget, what, what, what's some of the songs? Well, a lot of the songs, some of the songs, like you said, have been baptized. <laughs> even some of the, we've even taken some of the melodies. I forget, I forget what it is. I don't know if it's the national anthem. or one, one of our, our, we, It was an old, I think it was a pub song, but we take the same melody but just put different words. So it's a common thing. People do that all the time. You'll take the same melody or the same um, chord progression, um, and, and that's the way the chords change, the different. So, like, if I'm playing this. That could be a, you could write a lot of songs to that. And a lot of songs have been written to that. And a lot of times coming from secular to gospel, there's certain progressions that already musicians play. And the, the writers in the secular realm would just write their lyrics over that. The musicians in the gospel realm will write their lyrics over there, but the music is really the same. Um, now, I think what, what really changed also is the lyrics, but also the visual presentation. If you're singing secular, you, you're dealing with a lot more um, th things that aren't necessarily distinct with the church. So the, I don't know what you want to call it, the, um, I don't know, if I, if I would deal with morality. <laughs> if you want to deal with the morality, do you have a different system of what you're willing to do to communicate what you're trying to communicate? gospel, we have a whole other set of rules that dictate how far we're willing to go to express it or we'll express it differently. So to me, in my opinion, is the music is the same. The only thing is different is the presentation visually and, and the lyrical content. Um, and I think anything else is just like a, a soul thing. People feel a certain way. Like if you had a guitar, just the way a guitar player a person, the minute, minute I play a guitar, it gives people a certain feel. But you can take that same guitar and play it in a different manner and it might express something different to someone else. Um, a lot of times we have strong opinions, I think, a lot about, um, about you know, what music is holy or what music is secular a lot of times, but really, musically, it's, it's, it's really no different. Um, I know even, I forget which period that is, like, we have a thing called a tritone in, in music, so like, it's this sound right here. And that, was that, that tonality or that sound that you all are hearing there was thought as the evil chord, because you can be like, Think that's the devil coming or something, <laughs> but that tritone is also a part of a chord. When I was playing Amazing Grace, if you can hear that, hear that note in there, that tone was evil. But then when you just change the lyrics, oh man, I played that same note, but because of the way I'm singing or the purpose behind it, it, it actually had carried on a different message. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Um, so it's, to me, it's just really. The, the lyrics and the, um, and the visual presentation that, that really makes a difference. Um, anything else is just everybody's personal feeling, which I understand certain types of music make people think a certain thing, but that's not, that's, that's, my, that's not objective, that's highly subjective, you know, because of sound, you know, there's no, no one has a, um, a right to own sound. You, know, you can't say, this is my note, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, this note means this, this chord means this. That's, that's just opinion. Musically, for those who understand music, you know, the, the intervals, that's the distance between a note. That's found in every, every piece of music you've ever heard, at least in the Western scale. Everybody has these same notes to come from. It's just the lyric, lyrics and the, um, and, the, and the visual presentation that makes the difference, in my opinion. So. Well, I think that it's up to me to keep time and and uh, keep <laughs> keep things from turning back into the pumpkin. So, uh, 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 thank you so much for being here, and uh, we I hope there will be another occasion. Okay. And uh, let's thank him one more time. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all.